Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the combustion of alkanes. We're going to talk about what combustion actually is, why shorter chain alkanes undergo combustion more easily than longer chain alkanes, the differences between complete and incomplete combustion, and look at the formation of pollutant gases from the burning of alkane-based fuels. Before we talk in detail about the combustion of alkanes, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Hydrocarbons are compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms. They all have a molecular formula of C something, H something. Alkanes are a type of hydrocarbon in which all the carbon atoms are bonded together with single carbon-carbon bonds. They are referred to as saturated hydrocarbons and all have the formula CnH2n plus 2. Exothermic reactions describe reactions where energy is released overall by the reacting particles, making the products formed lower in energy and more stable, but increasing the heat content and temperature of their surroundings. These reactions have a negative enthalpy change as the amount of thermal energy stored up inside the products is less than in the reactants. Recap done, let's go. When alkanes are burnt in oxygen, heat energy is released as the process is exothermic. This released heat energy can be harnessed and used for other things, such as generating electricity. This makes alkanes useful as fuels. A fuel is a substance that has stored energy inside that can be released to do useful work. When alkanes burn, a combustion reaction takes place. Without getting too bogged down with language here, burning usually means something is on fire, reacting with a flame produced, whereas combustion refers to the actual chemical reaction that is taking place. When combustion occurs, the carbon and hydrogen in the alkane get oxidized and gain bonds to oxygen atoms. Usually carbon dioxide and water are produced, although this doesn't have to be the case, as we'll see later in the video. The process is always exothermic as these products of oxidation are lower in energy and more stable than the original alkane and oxygen reactants. This difference in energy goes into the surroundings as heat. For example, when methane gets combusted, the carbon dioxide and water produced are lower in energy than the original methane and oxygen, and large amounts of energy get released, as seen when you use a Bunsen burner and burn methane gas to heat something up. To get a combustion reaction to start, energy is needed. This is why you need a lit splint to light a Bunsen burner. The small flame of the splint gives just enough energy to kickstart the combustion. Giving this energy and starting the combustion process is referred to as ignition. Longer chain alkanes need to be given high amounts of energy to start combusting and are harder to ignite than shorter chain hydrocarbons. The reason is because for combustion to occur, alkane molecules must be gaseous. Even if the fuel itself is liquid or solid, the alkane molecules in the fuel have to be gaseous in order to react with oxygen and for combustion to happen. As longer chain hydrocarbons are harder to vaporize and turn into a gas than shorter chain hydrocarbons, more energy is needed to kickstart the combustion of them. For example, let's look at a wax candle burning. A wax candle is made up of very long chain alkane molecules that have lots of intermolecular forces between them, and this makes the candle a solid at room temperature. In order for these alkane molecules to combust, they must become gaseous. During the burning of a candle, a flame on the wick melts the wax at the top of the candle, and then the liquid wax gets drawn up the wick. As it gets close to the flame, it vaporizes and turns into a gas. This gaseous vapor then reacts with oxygen due to the high temperature of the flame and combustion occurs. When you try and light a candle then, you are not only having to give enough energy to start the chemical combustion process, but also you need to provide enough energy to vaporize the solid alkanes on the wick. This takes a lot of energy and makes a candle relatively hard to ignite. 
If you take a short chain alkane, however, like methane gas, the molecules in the fuel are already in gaseous phase, meaning no energy is needed to vaporize them. All you need to do is give enough energy to kickstart the chemical reaction. Just a small spark is often enough. This means it is much easier and faster to ignite the gaseous methane compared to the alkanes in a wax candle. So, as hydrocarbon or alkane chain length in a fuel increases, it becomes harder to ignite. Short chain hydrocarbons are easily ignited and therefore combust very quickly compared to longer chain hydrocarbons. As mentioned, a combustion reaction is effectively oxidation. Atoms in the combusted molecule will form new bonds of oxygen and oxides of them are formed. For alkanes, this means carbon atoms gain bonds with oxygen to form carbon oxides and hydrogen atoms gain a bond with oxygen forming water. The hydrogen in an alkane will always react with oxygen to form water, H2O, in a combustion reaction as H2O is the only stable oxide of hydrogen that can be formed. Carbon, however, can form two different oxides, carbon dioxide, CO2, and carbon monoxide, CO. Both are stable molecules that can be formed in combustion. Although carbon dioxide is more stable than carbon monoxide, and as a result, is always the preferred product of carbon combustion. The thing is, carbon monoxide requires less oxygen per mole of carbon than carbon dioxide does. In carbon monoxide, there is only one oxygen atom per carbon atom. In carbon dioxide, however, there are two oxygen atoms per carbon atom. This means forming carbon dioxide requires larger amounts of oxygen per mole of carbon. If, during a combustion reaction, oxygen levels fall too low, there simply isn't enough oxygen available to form carbon dioxide from all the carbon atoms in the fuel. As a result, carbon monoxide will start to be produced. This kind of combustion is referred to as incomplete combustion as the carbon doesn't get completely oxidized to carbon dioxide. Incomplete combustion can be easily identified by a yellow flame. In extreme cases, if the oxygen levels get very low, some carbon atoms can't be oxidized to oxides at all, and solid carbon gets produced. This is called soot and can be seen as black particles in a flame, often referred to as a smoky or sooty flame. When carbon dioxide is produced in a combustion reaction, the carbon is being completely oxidized and the combustion is described as complete combustion. In complete combustion, the flame is described as clean and sometimes has a faint blue color. So the combustion of an alkane can be complete or incomplete. For complete combustion, carbon dioxide and water are produced. For incomplete combustion, carbon monoxide and water are produced. For incomplete combustion reactions with very low oxygen levels, solid carbon soot can be formed. When using alkanes as fuels, complete combustion is always preferred for two main reasons. The first is energy. Carbon dioxide is more stable than carbon monoxide, and this means the formation of carbon dioxide releases more energy than the formation of carbon monoxide. Complete combustion will release more heat energy than incomplete combustion per mole of the same alkane. As the whole point of combusting alkanes is to release heat energy, ensuring complete combustion of a fuel ensures the maximum amount of energy gets released. The second reason is the toxicity of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas that limits the body's ability to carry oxygen in the blood. Without getting too biological or biochemical here, oxygen binds to a substance called hemoglobin in red blood cells and then gets transported around the body, being delivered to wherever it needs to go. Carbon monoxide is better at binding to hemoglobin than oxygen and doesn't let go, meaning as we breathe in carbon monoxide into our lungs and its level in the blood increases, less and less hemoglobin is available to transport oxygen meaning cells in the body simply can't get enough oxygen to function properly. 
this can become very serious and even lead to death. No real surprise here then that we don't want incomplete combustion of alkanes occurring, especially in indoor spaces or enclosed environments. Adequate supplies of fresh oxygen and good ventilation of exhaust gases is a legal requirement for any kind of combustion of alkanes indoors, such as for gas boilers or fires. The type of fuel an alkane being combusted also has an impact on whether complete or incomplete combustion is likely to occur. Short-chain alkanes are more likely to undergo complete combustion and long-chain alkanes are more likely to undergo incomplete combustion. This kind of makes sense, as longer chain alkanes have more carbon atoms in each molecule, meaning more oxygen gas is needed to ensure complete combustion. There are only so many oxygen molecules that can be in a given area around combusting gases, meaning some carbon atoms in a long chain alkane simply don't have access to enough oxygen for complete combustion, even if the oxygen levels in the surrounding air are at normal levels about 21%. We can see this if we compare the combustion of methane, <laughs> again, to the combustion of long chain hydrocarbons in liquid oil. The liquid oil, much harder to ignite, burns with a very yellow, smoky flame, meaning incomplete combustion is occurring. Whereas the methane is burning with a lovely clean blue flame that shows complete combustion is occurring. A huge use of alkanes as fuels is for internal combustion engines. The alkane fuel is ignited in a small cylinder with a piston that gets forced upwards and downwards by the high pressure created by the production of gases and heat from the combustion reaction. This movement of the piston is then used to create rotation of a crankshaft that can be connected to a gearbox to turn things, such as car wheels. Exhaust gases then leave the cylinder through exhaust valves. As amazing as an internal combustion engine is, there is a huge problem here. If the fuel contains any elements other than just carbon and hydrogen, they too can react with oxygen in a combustion reaction. As alkane fuels usually come from crude oil, they are rarely pure and often contain lots of impurities. Sulfur is a common impurity. When sulfur in the fuel reacts with oxygen, sulfur dioxide gas gets produced. Bad news! Sulfur dioxide gas is an acidic oxide that when released into the atmosphere can react with water to form sulfurous and sulfuric acid. These acids stay in the clouds until they fall with rain, forming acid rain. Another drawback to the internal combustion engine is the formation of nitrogen oxides. The oxygen used in an internal combustion engine comes from the air, and air doesn't just contain oxygen, it also contains nitrogen. Now, nitrogen gas, N2, is normally unreactive. Under the very high temperatures and pressures inside an engine, however, it can react with oxygen to form nitrogen oxides. Nitrogen oxides, just like sulfur dioxide, are acidic oxides and can also react with water in the atmosphere to form nitrous and nitric acid, leading to acid rain. Acid rain is a big problem, and to try and minimise the emission of such pollutant gases, catalytic converters are bolted onto most internal combustion engines. Inside, solid transition metal catalysts are arranged in a honeycomb-like pattern to increase their surface area, and they cause the harmful exhaust gases, including carbon monoxide and unburnt fuels, to be converted into less harmful exhaust gases, such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen. The use of low sulfur fuels is essential to prevent the emission of sulfur dioxide. So, to summarise. Alkanes can be combusted to release energy. This makes them useful fuels. Shorter chain alkanes are more volatile and easier to ignite than longer chain alkanes. The combustion of organic molecules, including alkanes, can be complete or incomplete. The complete combustion of an alkane produces carbon dioxide and water, and the alkane burns with a clean blue flame. Incomplete combustion produces carbon monoxide and water, or solid carbon particles, soot and water. The alkane burns with a yellow and sometimes smoky flame. 
Complete combustion requires more oxygen per mole of alkane than incomplete combustion, meaning if oxygen levels are low, incomplete combustion is more likely to occur. Longer chain alkanes are more likely to undergo incomplete combustion due to the higher requirement of oxygen per mole of alkane being combusted. Impure fuels can cause other products to be formed when the fuel is combusted, leading to the release of pollutant gases. For example, sulphur dioxide is released when sulphur containing fuels are combusted. The high temperature and pressure inside an internal combustion engine can cause nitrogen oxides to be formed. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can react with water in the Earth's atmosphere and form acid rain. To help reduce the emission of such gases, low sulfur fuels and catalytic converters are used. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.